What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. Uh, okay, I'm already fucking this up in the first three seconds. I'm not good at that. So, in any case, welcome to the show. If you clicked on this video, I assume that you're somebody uh, that's looking to get in shape. You're tired of sitting on the couch. You want to maybe build some muscle, get leaner, get stronger, get sexier, all of that good stuff. You just want to, maybe you just want to make some gains. So, you have clicked correctly. You come to the right address. Because of the pandemic, most of us are stuck at home right now. Well, what better time than to get your ass moving, put in some work and get into shape. So that's why I decided to put together a little video series of workouts, home workouts that you can follow along from your home without needing any fancy equipment. All that you're gonna need for this workout is just some regular ass furniture, like a table, a couch, a chair, stuff like that. Watch something else that you're gonna need is a big sturdy bag, grocery bag, sports bag, whatever, figure it out. And some books. If you don't have books, I don't know what to tell you. Get your life together, get fucking books, put them in the bag. Bada bim bada boom. Okay, moving on. So, big fucking bag full of books. Next thing. I want uh, everybody to be able to do this workout. I want complete beginners to be able to do this workout. If you're somebody that's just coming off the couch, looking to get into shape, props to you. I want you to be able to do this workout. I also want more intermediate to advanced level athletes to be able to do this workout. You know, people just can't make it to the gym. They're looking for them sweet, sweet gains. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I laid out a structure of basic movements, basic movement patterns, um, and um, uh, better for this. So, because I want people of all levels to be able to do this workout, I laid out a structure of basic movement patterns and uh, the specific exercises that you're gonna do for those movement patterns they depend on your starting level so what i'm gonna uh, do today is i'm gonna explain how i set up the uh, the workout exactly i'm gonna lay out the template and on top of that i'm gonna show you the exercises for the for the beginner level so if you're somebody that's already a little bit more advanced well very sorry you're gonna have to wait until my next video but if you can wait that long, I recommend that you give this workout a try anyways, because I did it myself and honestly, it's not peanuts, it's pretty tough. Now with all of that out of the way, let's explain how I set up the workout. All right, everybody, as you can see, we're doing a full body workout consisting of eight different exercises. We're starting off with a squat variation that's gonna work them legs. And we're following that with a lunge variation that's also gonna work your legs. Next up is a hip hinge that works the posterior chain, meaning all the muscles on the back of your body. Then a pushing variation that works your pushing muscles, your chest, shoulders, and triceps. A pulling variation that works your pulling muscles, that's your back and your biceps. Then an overhead movement that mainly works scapular retraction and external rotation of the shoulder, as well as improve your overhead mobility. Next up is a side plank variation that is going to improve your core strength and work your obliques. Your obliques are the muscles on the side of your body. And finally we're finishing up with a dead bug that's going to work even more core strength because you can never have enough of that as well as work your abs. Now we're going to run through these exercises one after the other meaning you'll do a set of squats followed by a set of lunges, followed by your hip hinge, and so on. Now, when you've run through all eight exercises, you've completed one round. And the amount of rounds you do and the rest you take in between rounds, that depends on the day of the week that it is. So, let's take a look at this. Okay, first of all, we're going to be doing this workout four days a week. Day one, we're gonna start off pretty easy. We're doing three rounds and resting for three minutes in between rounds. Day two, we're doing four rounds, resting for two minutes. Day three, five rounds, resting for 90 seconds. And day four, we're doing five rounds and resting for only 60 seconds in between rounds. 
Now, this means that we're doing a little bit more work in less time every single workout. And that, of course, is the whole idea behind exercise. You put a difficult stimulus on your body, your body tries to adapt. And if you don't increase the stimulus over time, your body has no need for further adaptation. Now, to stay with that theme, we're also going to increase the reps from week to week. So week one, we're gonna start off with 10 reps. Then week two, we do 12, week three, 15, and week four, we do 20 reps on every set of every exercise. So after doing five rounds of 10 reps with only one minute break at the end of week one, we should have absolutely no problem coming in the next week and doing three rounds of 12. So even though we're doing more reps, we're actually doing less rounds and we're resting for longer in between those rounds. So this workout might actually feel a little bit easy and that's totally fine because in the coming days we're going to up the volume and we're going to up the intensity again. Now this means that we're using kind of a wave structure. We're starting with low volume early in the week and we're working up to high volume later in the week. And that's going to make sure that you're ready to go for the harder workouts by the end of the week because you can actually recover a little bit in the beginning. Now for this reason I also recommend that you do workout 1 and 2 back to back, take a full day of rest, do workout 3, take another full day of rest and then do workout 4. That way you're just the most recovered for your hardest workouts. Of course this is an optimal scenario. Uh, this is not going to work for everybody's schedule so in the end you just have to make sure that you do it whatever way fits for you in the end the most important thing is getting the work done now the next thing that we're going to do to make the workout more challenging is setting a time limit in which we have to complete our sets but this is going to really be great to build up your conditioning and we do this by doing the sets emom style meaning every minute on the minute so how to do this you set a timer to go off every minute and then we start our sets at the beginning of every minute once you finish your reps you have the remainder of the minute to recover so if you move fast awesome you can rest longer if you move slow too bad your breaks are going to be shorter now in terms of how long this entire workout should take we're doing eight exercises so that means a round should take you exactly eight minutes however side planks are done on both sides so we have to count those double so that makes nine minutes so on day one we do three rounds we should get this whole thing over with within 33 minutes and on day four we do five rounds we should get it done in under 50 minutes and that's of course great news because we all got stuff to do so we're done including our warm-up in just about 45 minutes to maximally one hour and we can get on with our lives since we're doing sets of 10 and 12 reps in the first two weeks of the program of course we can get these sets done a lot faster compared to the last two weeks of the program especially week four where we're doing sets of 20. now if you move fast these sets in the earlier weeks should take you about 15 to 20, 25 seconds to complete however if you move at lightning speeds all the time your technique is maybe going to suffer a little bit so for that reason i recommend the following during the first two weeks of the program you perform your reps slower and more methodically this is going to be a really good time to work on your technique iron out any kinks focus on your breathing and just make your movements as consistent as possible and then during the last two weeks of the program your goal is going to be to move fast this is going to give you more time to rest before the end of every minute and as a bonus it's also going to increase your explosive power now if anything is unclear up until this point just check out the description box where i've laid out everything one more time all right so let's move on to the beginner level exercise variations okay we're starting off here with the low box squat now here you can see me performing them with a nice slow controlled tempo that's going to be perfect for the first weeks of the program to really work on your technique what you want to focus on is pushing your knees out pushing your butt back and lifting your chest up toward the sky go down with a nice and controlled tempo breathe in on the way down and breathe out on the way up now if this exercise is pretty easy for you you can also do it with a little bit of weight here you see me doing them with my big fucking bag full of books i managed to fill it up until about 12 kilograms that's pretty important if you're gonna do them with weights is that it's a challenging weight for you so take a big bag fill it up with at least 12 to 20 kilo and have at it 
All right, we have come to the second leg exercise, the assisted reverse lunge. Now, assisted in this case means that you're gonna hold on to something for balance. You're gonna take a big step backward, lower control until your knee lightly touches the floor. Don't come crashing down because your kneecaps won't like that. And then reverse the motion and you're staying as upright as possible the entire time. Now here you can see some common mistakes. Big mistake I see a lot of times is the knee from the front leg coming inward. You don't want this. You want to turn on your glutes and slightly point your knee outwards. Then two other mistakes we can see here. First, leaning back too much, putting too much pressure on the lower back. And second, leaning too far forward. This happens when your legs are not strong enough. So you really have to work hard, push hard through your, both of your legs to try to maintain this nice upright posture. Now here we have come to our hip hinge, the Romanian deadlift row, or for short RDL row. And here is where a big fucking bag full of books is really gonna come into play. Um, now for this exercise, it's a little bit more technical movement. So that's why I'm gonna split it up into two parts to make the technique extra easy to digest. So the first part of the movement is the uh, Romanian deadlift. And what you're going to do for this is you're going to start off by taking a really big breath full of air deep into your belly. You're going to flex your abs, make your entire core as tight as you can. Then you're gonna lift your chest up, tilt your hips backward, and slowly lower yourself down to the, toward the ground. Keep lifting your chest as high as you can during the entire time. Push your butt back as far as you can and lower yourself down until you feel a really deep stretch in your hamstrings. Then when you're in the bottom position, you're gonna hold it for a second. The entire time you're holding your breath in, don't breathe out. You're gonna explosively reverse the motion by shooting your chest up and shooting your hips forward. Then when you're at the top, then you can breathe out. And that's one repetition from the deadlift. Now to combine it with the row, you're gonna start off the exactly the same way. Starting with the deadlift, pushing your butt back, slowly lowering down until you feel a deep stretch in your hamstrings. And then in the bottom position, you're going to perform a row. So first, you'll let your hands drift forward a little bit to get a better stretch in your back muscles. Then you're gonna row explosively toward your belly button, keeping your elbows really tight toward your sides. Slowly reverse the motion, and then from the bottom position, you're going to deadlift the weight back up. So you're going to shoot your chest up and shoot your hips forward explosively again. Then at the top, then re you release your breath. So during the entire motion, you're breathing, you're holding your breath and you're bracing your core to stay as tight as you can. This is just gonna protect your back and um, you're creating a lot of intra-abdominal pressure, meaning just pressure on the inside of your body. And this pressure is supporting your muscles and supporting your spine and keeping your back as strong and stable as possible. Here you can see one of the most common mistakes. What's happening here? I have no tension in my lower back and therefore I'm letting my back round. Now the movement is taking place from my spine. My spine is bending instead of staying rigid and not enough movement is taking place in the hips. If you're somebody that's trouble doing this, then I highly recommend splitting the motion up into two parts. First practicing the deadlift, then practicing the row, and then once you get good at that, combining them together in one. So here we have come to our pushing exercise, which is gonna be the negative kneeling push-up. Uh, this exercise is really perfect for people that cannot do a lot of push-ups in a row yet with their own body weight, with good technique. This is because the negative portion of the movement, where you're lowering yourself down toward the ground, you are much, much stronger than in the positive portion, portion of the movement, where you're pushing yourself up. Your muscles are just stronger when they're resisting gravity compared to when they're having to completely overcome it. Now, for this exercise, you're going to need to take a pillow to put below your knees. You're going to set up in hands shoulder width position and you're gonna to try to make as straight a line as you can from your body. Now, when you've done this, 
Next thing is you're going to push out as far as you can through your shoulders and you're going to tuck your butt under you. So we're doing the exact opposite of what we just did with the Romanian deadlift row. And next, take a really big breath again, lower yourself down, control toward the ground, keeping your elbows really nice and tight to your body. And when we're in the bottom position, there's two ways in which we can reverse the movement. First is my preferred method is just pushing yourself back onto your knees, letting your hips bend. The second, if this is a little hard for you, is to just lift your knee out to the side and push yourself back. Now here I'm showing you exactly what you've got to do with your shoulders. You just push out as far as you can. And the second thing is you kind of twist down a little bit. You pull your shoulders down and away from your ears and there you lock them into place. And here you can see something going on. I don't know what this guy thinks he's doing, but don't be like this guy. If you're somebody whose push-ups look like this, like arms are super wide, flared out to the sides, not going down properly until his chest touches the floor, bouncing in the bottom position, being completely loose, no tension anywhere in the body, just horrific. So if you're somebody whose push-ups look like this, then I highly recommend you go back a few regressions like just do knee push-ups or negative push-ups until you've mastered a technique with the right amount of control. Like first master the basics, then move on. All right, the next exercise is a static table hang. This exercise is going to be great to train your grip strength and to train your scapular retraction, meaning the muscles that pull your shoulder blades together. And this is going to be very beneficial for your overall shoulder health. So for this exercise, we're going to set up under a table. We're going to grab the table by the sides, have our arms straight and lift our upper body up from the floor. The closer your feet are towards your butt, the easier it's going to be. Now, next we're going to make a straight line from our body, keep our core tight. And then we're going to pull our shoulder blades together behind our body, squeeze them together like you're trying to pinch something in, in between your shoulder blades and then depress them down. So push your shoulder blades away from your ears and down toward your hips. In this position, you're gonna uh, hold for a certain amount of time. And what I like for these static exercises, because we're not doing repetitions, is to actually double the amount of repetitions that you would do um, for seconds that you're going to hang. So if you're in week one and on every exercise you're doing 10 repetitions, then on this exercise you would hang for 20 seconds. Now there's two variations that you can do. One is uh, grabbing the table in the front. So instead of on the sides, you're grabbing this table in the front. This is going to be a little bit more challenging for your grip, but depending on the length of your arms and the height of your table, it might be a little bit more, a little bit easier. And then the second variation is a bent arm table hang. This is actually a progression. So if the first one is very easy for you, you can already progress to the next variation, which is gonna be the table hang with your arms bent. And this is gonna be a great progression to work up to table rows later. And that's it. Just remember to keep squeezing your shoulder blades together and keep depressing those shoulder blades away from your ears. All right, next up, we have the laying wall angel. I guess we can call it a floor angel. With this exercise, you're going to start up by lifting your knees up towards your chest as high as you can and flattening out your lower back. Next, you're going to tuck your chin down to make a little bit of a double chin so that your entire back is as flat as you can. Uh, toward the floor so there shouldn't be any millimeter of air at any point between your lower middle upper back and even uh, your head so what you're doing with the double chin is actually trying to press your neck against the floor now in this position you're going to start with your elbows at your sides and while pressing your arms into the floor you're going to extend your arms overhead you're going to press out all the way and during this entire time, you're trying to press your arms back. Something that you have to really focus on is in the top position, 
uh, your lower back is going to want to come off from the floor. This is because of restrictions in your mobility. So you really have to work hard to keep your lower back pressed flat against the floor and um, just keep everything pressed against the floor as hard as you can. This is really an exercise that you can make as hard as you want for yourself. So if you focus on the technique, it's going to be a, a very difficult exercise. And if you're not so strict with it, it's going to feel very easy. So really make sure to focus on those cues. So next up we have our side plank. Very basic exercise, it strains your obliques, the muscles on the side of your body. It's very good for core stability. And what you're going to do, you're going to set up with your shoulders directly over your elbows. Your hips pressed forward so that you make a straight line from your body again when you look from your shoulders to your hips to your knees. You're going to squeeze your abs and lift your hips up from the floor. In this position you're going to hold again for time. Just as the same with the static table hang, you're going to double the amount of reps that you would do into seconds. So week one where you do 10 reps, you'll be doing 20 seconds. Week four, you would finish with 40 seconds. Hold on both sides. That's another thing. Another thing with exercise, it's being done on both sides of the body. So with the EMOM sets, you're going to have to take an extra set for this one. All right, we've come to our final exercise, the dead bug. This exercise you're going to set up on the floor again with your lower back pressed flat against the floor just like with the floor angels. Your knees are lifted towards your chest and from this starting position you're slowly going to lower one of your legs down. Hold it with your heel lifted just a centimeter above the ground. Pause for about two to three seconds and return to the starting position and do the other leg. Now, the more you straighten out your legs, the harder this exercise is going to be. The harder your abs are going to have to work to keep your lower back pressed against the ground. And that is really what you want to focus on during this exercise. That you keep your lower back pressed against the ground so that your abs are doing all the work. And if you focus on this cue, you're going to get a six pack within just about two minutes. Seriously. You're going to be beach ready. Two minutes. all right everybody that wraps up this video now i hope you got something out of it i hope you like it if you did please like the video subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're updated in i don't know how long whenever i decide to upload a new video which i will do i will believe me i will i'll get there in any case, I don't know how any of this works yet, but um, I'm trying to get to a million subscribers. So I think a million subscribers are on the horizon. So it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll be putting out more videos. Also, if you are somebody that needs some help with getting into shape, I'm a professional coach. I uh, coach people that want to uh, get in the best shape of their life. So. Maybe you've been training for a while but haven't quite cracked the code. Uh, I'll be more than happy to help. Send me a message here on YouTube, on Instagram at something that I'll put on the screen. Or you can send me an email at my email address which I'll also put on the screen. So yeah, that basically wraps it up. Hope to see you all next time. Peace.